And now to our national winners. Uh, the US Professors of the Year are judged within four institutional categories, baccalaureate, community college, doctoral, and master's institutions. They're selected based on four criteria, their impact on and involvement with undergraduate students, their scholarly approach to teaching and learning, their contributions to undergraduate education on their campuses, and their recommendations from colleagues and students. CASE convenes two panels of experts, many of whom are former national and state winners, to conduct the preliminary rounds of judging. We then forward the highest scoring nominees to the Carnegie Foundation, where a panel identifies the best of the best. It is now time for you to meet the best of the best, and who better to introduce them to you than their former students. We begin with the Outstanding Baccalaureate College Professor of the Year. This year's winner is Christy Price, Professor of Psychology at Dalton State College in Dalton, Georgia. And here to introduce Professor Price is one of her former students, Carol Dusen. Carol, would you please come to the lectern? Thank you. It has been said that great teachers not only teach, but they inspire. Dr. Christy Price not only inspires her students, she becomes a lifelong mentor and role model who changes the lives of those she comes in contact with, including my own. I've had the honor of knowing Dr. Price as teacher, mentor, and friend for 14 years. I distinctly remember my first day of her introduction to education course. We began the class by sharing the characteristics of the best teachers we ever had. Little did we know that the teacher before us would hold those characteristics and so much more. Dr. Price has always seemed to be ahead of her time in so many ways. Even early on, her cutting edge innovative teaching techniques were a drastic change from the mind numbing lecture format from which I'd become accustomed to. She engages her students in authentic learning activities, discussing personal application exercises, analyzing fascinating cases, collaborating on group projects, as well as developing her students' interpersonal, communication, critical thinking, and writing skills. Dr. Price's class was one where I truly learned how to teach. I now look back and consider myself lucky to be part of that extra extraordinary community she created in her classroom. Among the many things I have learned and continue to learn from my mentor is the importance for us all to live authentic lives of integrity and to be who we truly are. Over the course of her entire career, she has been a shining light in the sometimes dark world for those students who feel they cannot go on, will never fit in, or perhaps fear they will never amount to anything. As a student-centered, caring teacher, Christy's delightful presence, warm personality, and extremely effective teaching methods have had an immeasurable, immeasurable impact. She has quite literally inspired and transformed thousands over the years. Dr. Price has been my model for how I operate and run my classroom. I've always taken a scholarly approach to teaching my students. My classroom lessons are both exploratory and experimental. I engage my students with lessons that involve real life application. My science curriculum and methods emphasize issues of global climate change and sustainability. I regularly address issues of social justice in my classroom, such as bullying and, bullying and diversity issues. I am so very proud to say that I followed in the footsteps of my amazing mentor, carrying on Dr. Christy Price's legacy, creating a conscientious community of learners who are committed to social, ju social justice and solving global issues. Thanks to her influence, my young students are poised and ready to take on the world. It is my great privilege and honor to introduce to you one of the most influential people I've ever been fortunate enough to call my mentor and friend, Dr. Christy Price. I am so proud of her. That's so very impressive. I want to thank Carol and thank you, Case and the Carnegie Foundation. It's just quite an honor to be here uh, among the greatest in the country. 
And I need to begin by saying I've been traveling quite a bit presenting my millennial research, and this is not my ideal time slot. Uh, my topic typically goes over best as an evening address after an open bar. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, and then everybody loves what I have to say. Um, whenever I have an opportunity to speak with students or faculty, uh, my sole intent is to offer up something of value to you. And when I thought about this address, I thought, well, within the time frame, this is gonna be a very difficult. Uh, however, it's not gonna keep me from trying. So here we go. When I contemplated what I could say that would be of most value to you, it occurred to me that you shouldn't be hearing from me, you should be hearing from our students. I don't have time to share all the highlights of my millennial research. Uh, for that, you're going to have to invite me to your campus, or better yet, buy the book when it comes out. <laughs> but I would like to share a student quote. Uh, these are great quotes from official evaluations of professors. And this one begins, if I only had one hour to live, I would spend it with my professor. It's, it's a heartwarming, wonderful thing, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing you'd save for your scrapbook. That's right. <laughs> However, the student then goes on to say, because my professor can make an hour seem like a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Clearly the message is we need to embrace more engaging evidence-based uh, pedagogy. In addition to utilizing classroom responders, social media, I have contemplated use of a dunk tank, aversive shock, mild hallucinogens, yet my vice president has yet to get back to me on <laughs> using or approving those techniques. Honestly, um, engaging and motivating this new generation of learners can be quite a challenge. Uh, this point was made very clear to me by my nine-year-old who's here. One day we were walking up the side of the ridge where we live, and I said to him, buddy, wouldn't it be neat if we took a camping trip and went hiking and so forth? And he looked up that side of the ridge and he said, well, maybe if we could build a bonfire and roast marshmallows, right? And the message here is, we really need to be constantly thinking about what's in it for them, right? What's in it for our students, making everything we do relevant to their lives. Which brings me to the most important part of my message. It's clear to me that who we are matters much more to our students than what we know. They will tell you we can potentially have a huge impact on their lives because inspiring teachers, and leaders at their very core are simply great people who make us feel that we too can become great. I feel personally like I've been so fortunate to have great people around me, particularly great teachers, throughout my life. Um, we're all here to thank Case and the Carnegie Foundation, um, but I really think it's those that are supportive of us closely that are the ones who really make us who we are. So my parents and siblings always been fabulously supportive of me, um, but I really think this award particularly, I'm at one of those institutions where I'm surrounded by fantastic colleagues. We've been engaged in a, a faculty development revolution basically on our campus. And I want to thank our vice president, Dr. Stone, who's here. Um, as my nominator and as the catalyst of that movement. And I know we acknowledged presidents, but if we could just quickly, I'd like to acknowledge her as a vice president, if you would stand really quickly. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, I most need to thank my wonderful students that I've had over the years. I just feel as though our students really appreciate what we do. Uh, and I wanna thank my own little immediate family. I mentioned Cal, um, who was also uh, being educated in a Catholic school, right? <laughs> um, this is a, an interesting story as well, really quickly. I was working on a grant proposal a few years back. He was probably about five at the time, and he approached me wanting me to play with him. And I said, buddy, I cannot play with you right now. This is a grant proposal that's due today, and it's worth a lot of money. 
he came back a few minutes later with his piggy bank <laughs> and said, Mom, if I give you my money, will you play with me? <sighs> this business of teaching and transforming lives can be incredibly time consuming. Maybe not quite 18 hour days, but close to it. Lately, I've been traveling so much, I'm most thankful that I have the sweetest child and an amazing partner who actually deserves an award herself for just putting up with me for 15 years. But I will tell you one thing about the nine-year-old in closing here. In winning this award, he was concerned, and he said, you're not going to become so famous that someone's going to assassin you, are you? <laughs> I had to reassure him that that would not be the case. Yet, honestly, 10 years ago when my partner and I decided to have a child, I did have some hesitation based on the harsh realities of the subculture within which we live. I have had a student who waited nearly a whole semester to share with our class just the other day how he has been treated awfully because he is gay. Every semester I hear stories like his. I have heard others tell me their parents put notes on their pillow telling them they're going to hell. And still other students who are 18 years old raising their young siblings because their parents have been deported to Mexico. Well before I was born, Martin Luther King Jr. said he longed for a day when little black boys and black girls would be able to join hands with white boys and white girls. Now, 50 years later, just last week, our president in his acceptance acceptance speech said he still hopes to create a culture in our country where it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you look like, black or white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, young or old, rich or poor, abled or disabled, gay or straight, you can make it here if you're willing to try. It's my greatest hope that through our influence in the classroom, that is the future we will create for our children. Thank you. I'm going to stay right here for a minute. Don't forget to check, Christy. Uh, well, Christy Price, on behalf of CASE and the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching, it is an honor to recognize you as the 2012 Outstanding Baccalaureate College Professor of the Year. Congratulations, Christy.